From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Brad Taylor, Johnny, Mid-States Industrial. Oh, hiya, Brad. Caught another chief accountant with his hand in the till? Nope, this is an old case, Johnny. Three weeks old, anyway. It's that Kansas City payroll stick-up. Uh-huh. We were right. It was a Jipper Nitson gang. How do you figure? Well, as you know, there's been an APB out on him, wanted for questioning ever since he disappeared the day after the holdup. Yeah, I know, Brad. He was recognized last night in Phoenix, Arizona. State Highway Police threw up roadblocks. They tagged him south of Tucson, just north of the Mexican border. They get him? If they had, I wouldn't be calling you. He shot his way clear, but they killed one of his boys, Ronnie Bledsoe. He'll never be missed. So Jipper's still on the loose, huh? Yep, along with that $100,000 payroll insured by us. I gotta get that money back, Johnny. All right, Brad. I'll fly out there and find it for you. Uh, but watch yourself. Every minute, those hoods are three-time killers. I thought it was two. Three now. They killed a state trooper at that roadblock. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Primrose matter. Item one, $142.80, incidentals in Hartford, and transportation to Tucson, Arizona, where I checked into a hotel. Then I contacted the highway police and presented my credentials to Lieutenant Cal Mervin, who was directing the all-out search for the Nitson gang. Lieutenant Mervin had been at the roadblock. They call us flat-footed, Dollar. That's how they happened to get away with it. How do you mean, Lieutenant? We flashed the red light on them, and they slowed down and rolled up to us like they were going to stop. The car was a different make from the one they'd supposedly been seen in. We found later they'd stolen another one in Phoenix. I see. Then when we threw the spot on them, we saw just the one man, the driver. Turned out the others were down on the floor. How many were in the car? Four, apparently. Three afterward. I shot one of them. They threw his body out a half mile down the road. I may have hit another one. I'm not sure. That figures... I tip off from Kansas City named Jipper, Nitson, Ronnie Bledsoe, and two unidentified. Yeah, and Bledsoe's the one who was killed. Nitson and the other two got through. You said they slowed down as though they were going to stop. What happened? Oh, there's no excuse, Mr. Dollar. We were careless, that's all. Why don't you get so many false alarms, mistaken IDs? And to make a car, the whole setup, it didn't seem to fit. You can't be wound up ready to pitch all the time. Well, we paid for it. Ben with his life. I was luckier. I got off with this bullet burn on the side of my head. Hey, you never know. Check. Well, anyway, the boys on the floor of the car came up shooting. One of them with a Tommy gun. Hmm, they used the Tommy gun in the stick-up. That's how the two guards in the armored truck were killed. It's a rough weapon, Mr. Dollar. Ben dropped on the first burst from it. Didn't even know what hit him. I got this scratch from a pistol bullet. Saved my life, I guess. It flattened me before the Tommy gun picked me up. Then the driver slammed into second, and they skidded past on the shoulder. I hauled up my gun and emptied it at him before I passed out. Hitting that fellow Bledsoe was sheer luck. Any trace of them at all since they broke clear? No. They had a little luck themselves. As I said, I passed out, and it was 20 minutes before a car came along the highway. Or before one stopped, anyway. I think several probably passed, scared to get mixed up in something. Oh, that's understandable. And the fellow that picked me up took me 15 miles up the road to an emergency first aid station. All in all, it was over an hour before the report got to Highway Patrol headquarters and they could get new blocks set up. And Nitson and his boys could have covered a lot of ground by then. Sure, that's it. Here's a map of the southern Arizona area from here to the border. Mm -hmm. Here's where they hit us. We had the roadblock there at the junction. I see. From there south to the border, there's no through road branching off, just some dead enders. Or like the Arivaca Road that loop back and connect into the highway again. What about the border, Lieutenant? According to the Mexican customs officials at Nogales, the car didn't show up there. And I'm inclined to buy that. With the rear window shot full of bullet holes, it would have been pretty conspicuous. And as I understand it, it hasn't turned up anywhere else. No, nope, so far we haven't been able to find it. Of course, they had the advantage of an hour's head start. Well, that's it, Mr. Dollar. They could have doubled back. It could be in New Mexico, northern Arizona, California, a thousand places. On the other hand, though, they couldn't have known they'd have that hour's start. What do you mean? 
Well, they couldn't have known they'd killed your partner and left you unconscious. You were still shooting at them when they gunned away from that roadblock. All they could reasonably suppose was that you'd be reporting in by radio two minutes later. What are you getting at, Mr. Dollar? Well, if that's what they did suppose, then they wouldn't try any doubling back. And yet they didn't reach the border down here at Nogales. But there's no through road that connects into that 20-mile stretch of highway. All right, so maybe they're still bottled up right in that section. I don't see how. We've been over it half a dozen times. In cars, horseback, helicopter, we're still checking it. I'm just about ready to cross it off. Logic says that's the most probable place they'd be. Can logic find them, Mr. Dollar? It might, combined with a whole lot of luck. You got something in mind? Well, I don't know. I, I was wondering if a civilian, so to speak, might have a better chance of stumbling onto them. They'd be on the lookout for the official search parties. You being the civilian. Uh, that's what I sort of had in mind. They're pretty rough lads. Hey, tell me something. Do you get a lot of rock hounds around here, uh, amateur geologists, uranium hunters? <laughs> if you're not careful, they jump out from behind the cactus and stake a claim on your watch dial. Easterners, some of them, I suppose. Uh, tenderfeet, I guess you'd call them. Not some of them, most of them. Then one more wouldn't exactly create a sensation. No, he wouldn't even be noticed. Is that the angle you're thinking of? Unless you know a better one. No, it's not bad. What, do you know where I can get fixed up with an outfit? Go to Dave Bright's Sporting Goods on South Stone Avenue. He'll give you that dude look about as cheap as anybody. Just tell him I sent you. All right. And um, don't get too far away from civilization, Mr. Dollar. Any special reason? Yeah. I may want to contact you to let you know the Nitsen gang's been picked up in Portland or in Butte, Montana. Maybe. But I wouldn't count on it. Expense account item two, $446.35 for a deluxe rockhound rig, complete from buckskin field boots to sleeping bag, snake bite serum, and a Geiger counter and including five days' rental on a four-wheel drive Jeep. With that kind of a get-up, anybody would have to find uranium just to break even. But at least I figured I was equipped for any possible eventuality, so I headed into the wilds. And the first spot I decided to prospect was around 20 miles north of the border, 50 yards back off the highway. It was known to the local inhabitants as Jake's Bar and Grill. The bar was a warped plank counter with rickety wooden stools. The grill seemed to consist of a rack of stale sandwiches wrapped in wax paper. But it looked as though Jake himself might be pay dirt. Uh, howdy, stranger. What do you say? Save your money and buy beer. <laughs> That's a good idea, but I think I'll have a scotch this time. Even better idea. <laughs> uh, have something yourself? Uh, you paying for it? Yeah, I might at that. Well, then I'll just have me a little of this foreign hooch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well... Here's biting a rattlesnake. Check. Scotch. <coughs> well, you figuring to find yourself some of that there uh, uranium, are you? Yeah, I might. How'd you guess? Them duds you're wearing come from Dave Bright's place. Sunday mining clothes, we call them. Hey, no offense. Oh, I'm hard to offend. The name's Johnny Dollar, Mr. Uh... Jake Meager. Jake's enough, though. Everybody knows him for that. Been around here a long time. Oh, then you know this country pretty well, I imagine. Well, enough to tell you that if you find a fresh... Square foot, one where somebody ain't already been looking, and you're doing better than most tender feet. No, uh, no, no offense there, it's just a way of talking. Well, I, I guess you call this a vacation, too. I, I don't really care much whether I find anything or not. It's uh, just a chance to see some new country. Well, I reckon you could call some of this more or less new once you get away from that there highway. Oh, and how do you go about doing that? You mean by car, I guess. Uh, Easterners ain't much on walking. Well, I, I have one with a four-wheel drive. Get you a mile or two further, but that's about all. Only way to do it's on foot. <laughs> You're probably right. But I'd start by car, at least. <laughs> uh, which side road would I take if I wanted to get lost? Uh, around here, you mean? Yeah. Anywhere along the highway between the junction and the border. Well, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't have much choice. There are six, seven passable roads, but they don't lead no place except to ranches. Don't uh. even get up in the foothills. You, uh, you ain't getting a mite dry again, are you? Mm. Oh, sure. Fun them both up again. <laughs> Much obliged to you, Mr. Dollar. No, I'll mention yeah. Well, there'll always be an England, like the fellow says. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. About them roads. Now, <coughs> the only one that might fit the bill for you is uh, Santa Rita Summit Road. <coughs> oh, I think I remember that on the map. Yeah, on the map. Well, 
It, uh, it leaves the highway about three miles down, then runs 14 miles back up into the Santa Rita mountain range. It doesn't connect on through? No, dead ends, a couple of miles past Primrose Camp. None of these here roads go no place. That's what I've been telling them state police for two days. They've been looking for some stick-up fellas. Be... I reckon you heard about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Why, them fellas would be out of their minds to take one of them there side roads. Ain't no place they could go to on them. Oh, it sounds logical, all right. You ask me. Them fellas jumped the border somehow. That's how come they was down here in this part of the country to begin with. Oh, well, you're probably right, Jake. Anyhow, uh, you think this summit road might get me off the beaten path, huh? Well, it's your best bet around here. It climbs up into the pines. Uh, it hits 6,000 feet at Primrose Camp. It's in good shape, too. Used to haul ore out over it a few years back. There are mines up in there? No, no, no. They're all worked out now. Oh, a few little high graders scratching for pennies. But the big stuff's gone, for the time being, at least. Some folks figure it'll come back, but I ain't one of them. Well, what is this Primrose Camp? Pop Mardell's place, named after the old Primrose Mine. Yeah, but what is it? Well, mixture of things. Why, uh, Pop's probably been making more money there than he would if the mines did come back. He, he, he's he got a filling station and half a dozen flimsy tourist cabins, lunch counter that his missus runs, little grocery store and souvenir shop his daughter Jenny takes care of. Ooh, got a lot of things making income for him. Well, what about customers with a place 14 miles up a dead-end road? Well, he gets a few. Enough. Picnickers and tourists in the summertime, hunters in winter, oh. and fellows like you all year round <laughs> come looking for this uranium stuff. He ain't got much expense, neither. It's all in the family, you see. And now he's got a new hand to help, starting today. That's so? Yeah, yeah. He come down this afternoon to get the mail. Yeah, you see, the bus stops and drops it off here with me, and Pop comes down every day and picks it up. <laughs> I figure he likes a chance to get out of sight of the missus for an hour. <laughs> 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 Sent this boy today. Uh, this new hand he's taken on. Well, uh, not exactly a hand. He's Pop's nephew, so he said. Comes out of Tulsa yesterday. Oh, I see. Funny thing, though. He sure didn't have any Oklahoma accent. Uh, Jake, how old a boy is he? Well, hard to say. Between 25 and 30, maybe. A real close mouth sort of fella. Couldn't hardly get a word out of him. Uh-huh. Uh, nothing told like Pop. Why, that old fella talk a leg off you if you go up there. Before you can open your mouth, he'll sell you a tank of gas, two quarts of oil you don't need, some genuine phony ore samples, and rent you a couple of them cabins of his. And... <laughs> well, thanks for the warning, Jake. I'll be ready for it. Well, uh, good luck, Mr. Dollar. Uh, whatever it is, you're uh, hunting. What do you mean? I've seen a lot of tenderfeet come hunting uranium, but you're the first one that wore a shoulder holster with a gun in it. Uh, no offense, you understand. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a talkative man freezes, a taciturn man thaws, but a dead man can't do either. All he can do is be dead. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>